Hello friends, today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic. It is related to one of the deepest secrets of the cosmic realities. How time passes? What is the secret behind passage of time? You would have noticed that for some people, a lifetime runs short for achieving even a small amount of goal that they want to achieve. And for some, they keep on achieving one thing after another or whatever they want to derive out of life. How does this happen? Many of you would exclaim, Einstein's theory of relativity provides the answer. Does it really? In my view not. The reason is that Einstein's theory of relativity addresses the issue of rate of passage of time for an object on two grounds. One is the gravity zone it is located in and the second is the speed at which it is traveling. As you all know that there is nothing in the cosmos which is stationary. Our own earth is rotating about its axis at a speed of around 1,600 km an hour. It is also revolving around the sun at a speed of around 1,7,000 km an hour. Even the solar system is revolving around the galactic nuclei at a speed of around 8 lakh km an hour. Now given the matrix of gravity and the speed at which the revolutions are taking place, including the rotation as in case of Earth, you would notice that there is no mathematical or other model in the Western sciences. In Sanatan, they have divided the lapse of time or the passage of time in the system of yugas. Yugas are the basic units. These are Satyu, Ritayu, Vaparyu, and Kalyu. Satyu lasts for about 70 lakh thousand plus years. Treta for about 13 lakh 64 thousand. Vapar for about 8 lakh 64 thousand. And Kalyuga for about 4 lakh 32 thousand. There is a difference, or I would say, reduction of 25% from Satyu to Kalyu. Now, why they went in for such an arrangement where there is a reduction of 25%? The reason is that the rate of passage of time itself changes. How does it occur? We have evidences for that. It is not that we are talking in air or, you know, the Vedangas, they, when they speak about it, they just pick up an arbitrary figure and fix it over there. How does it happen? This happens in the form of difference in sizes of the living beings because you see the, the, the inanimate objects or objects which are non-live they remain the same rocks do not grow or uh, you know perish they remain they are there since billions of years and they are going to continue to remain uh, weathering away with time very gradually whereas in case of living beings the we can see a definite cycle of birth life growth and death reproduction in between so how does it happen we need to compare the Western sciences, what they are telling about the fossils they have found and they have carried out dating by various means, including carbon dating. So when we look at it, we find that with the change of yugas, the types of animals and living beings which were there, they have changed. For example, I would say in Valmiki Ramayana, in Sundarkand, it is said that when Hamanji was entering uh, Lanka, he observed Lanka being guarded by four tusked elephants of mammoth sizes. Now, why is it that they suddenly disappeared from the earth? They were strong, they were powerful, and once they were growing, how did the breed suddenly finish? Or what happened to dinosaurs? Why did they suddenly went extinct, never to be reproduced? Not even a seed of theirs left, or even an eye left. We, we can find eggs today in you know many parts of India and uh, other parts of the world as well. So, how it has happened that suddenly they have all disappeared? Some foreign object came and hit, and you know everything perished, and you know, and government had finished things. No, it is not so. Actually, the system, the life support system, which is continuing a particular race or a particular generation or a particular breed of uh, animals, that changes, and that the biggest factor that nobody has looked at. Or I would say even the archaeologists have not looked at. They have not looked at to think that what are the gravity requirements of things, what are the gravity requirements of growth. There, there have been two, three experiments. You can see our video on our channel. Press the I button and you would see on the top right screen. You press the I button and you would you'll be able to see that how in space growing life is so difficult. Why it is difficult? Because the biggest factor is maintaining the pressure. And that pressure is on Earth, you would say, let's talk about atmospheric pressure. Why related to gravity? Atmospheric pressure would I can say that no. Atmospheric pressure is also determined by the gravity of the object, which is the host body that uh, you know it is it is pulling the gases towards its own uh, side and towards its center in such a way that that is creating pressure or anything that is there on the surface
Now the biggest question is how do we correlate the size of the animals or the living beings on the earth? I would why I say on the earth is because uh, in water the effect of buoyancy mitigates the influences of gravity. You see, the, if, when you go inside water, you find there is a difference weight perception in your own self. So, aquatic creatures may have been consistently living in the same way, with you know, same physical size and same bodily activities. But in case of earthy creatures, there is a direct impact of gravity. If there is a change in the gravity, uh, they would be directly influenced seen on their physiology, their uh, sizes and the way reproduction takes place. As you see the evolution, I don't call it evolution actually. I call it the uh, existence during different times. For the reason that if the evolution was constantly taking place, we would have seen a better dinosaur today, we would have seen a better mammoth today, and we would have seen uh, sizes of human beings growing as against the reality. Actually, in the olden days, in the I am not talking of on a scale of thousands of years, I am talking on a scale of lakhs of years. In one of my videos, when I have mentioned, you can click on the screen on the right side and see there is a video on uh, temple dating on uh, our own channel, The Science Beyond in which I have suggested that the size of uh, Pandavas was much much uh, bigger than the size of the human beings today. Draupadi ji according to me was around 18 feet. This I derived out of uh, detailed uh, analysis of a temple which is said to have uh, been constructed by Pandavas. Now uh, the effect of sizes is that also you would notice that the reproduction or you know the population part also is affected by the process itself. Pele, there used to be heavy animals and there used to be big sized animals. So the dinosaur used to lay eggs. They never used to have, uh, you know, babies being born out of home, as in case of water. Because baby will not take the impact of gravity. It will not be able to survive. And even before that, during the gestation period or when the baby would have been in the home. So there is a requirement of baby to breathe and continue to grow, and exchange gases with the atmosphere. So dinosaur, as we have been finding many of them in uh, Lamita formations in, in the Narada Valley in India. So uh, they, it used to have a particular structure that the exchange of gases could take place from its uh, chamber walls and yet the chamber walls could sustain the force of gravity. They could take on the weight of the baby also and also take on the force downward pull of the gravity. When you look at this, there is a direct correlation. Our archaeologists, because it's a different field altogether and also our genetic scientists have not related gravity with uh, growth. Uh, I mentioned at some length in my own book, uh, Cosmos and the Divinity, this one. So uh, what I found is that the bone formation, I'm touching it briefly, The how does the bone formation takes place? Uh, firstly, the bone extends out a kind of a scaffold uh, outside. It will jet out a single thread and around that uh, cartilage or a netting would be woven and the bone cells will come in move in and then they will fill it up. Then once this is complete, they will move on to the next step. Now, what is the effect of, what is the involvement of gravity in all this? More gravity supports more growth because the scaffolding is stretched further and further in a shorter time. So that is the way the growth, rate of growth is faster. And secondly, as we know from the Einstein theory, theory of relativity, the rate of passage of time also slows down. So these are two factors which are very very important. So this can lead us to conclude that in case the in the UX system, if the rate of passage of time was changing, that is how they were affecting the system of yugas. They were saying now there is a marked change in the rate of passage of time due to alteration in the gravitational arrangement or rate of uh, spinning of the Earth or uh, you know some other planet being bit closer or some passing by object which is you know uh, nearing us, crossing us or even the, the biggest of all is that the solar system move, movement around the galactic nuclei because galactic nuclei consists of around 30 lakh stars as big as the sun. The area is a few light years, the spread is in light years so you can imagine how big it is and it is not a single point at though there is a the galactic nuclei is a massive black hole but around that there are so many stars and so many solar systems so many planets and you know huge masses gigantic masses so all this uh, tells us that when the solar system is moving around this larger system of galaxy the rate of passage of time because we all are experiencing more or less gravity uh, which is coming through that when you apply Kepler's laws of motion you would realize that the speed also varies with 
if the orbital path is changing its the, the angular momentum is maintained the angular rate is maintained so if we are on a longer axis on a, lo a longer orbit then the rate of motion increases and it retards when the distance is shorter so when you see cumulatively you realize that sanatan is actually a super science the yuga is let's not look at it with the system of the ancient knowledge as something which is uh, superstition or mythology it is all real so all those who suspect we will cover it in another video about ramayan that uh, how manji saw uh, mama and you know it is said that ramchandji ruled for around 10000 years it is actually we are post posing the equivalence of in terms of today's time in satyu the rate of time was the you ordinary human life may have been longer you know life spans longer and uh, also the physical sizes so we don't find any remains it's something like you know, uh, you know father is telling the son about uh, his own grandfather the son says no no i believe in my grandfather but not your grandfather because i am not seeing so it's a, and it is we all know that of course there could not have been a grandson without a grandfather so that way if you look at things whole thing falls in place we have to infuse faith in the science that we are doing we should not be bound by all these five parameters of uh, you know sensory perceptions the uh, human consciousness is something which uh, discloses a lot many things to us so this was so much for this video and uh, we hope to meet you next bye bye